Hello everyone and welcome to this lesson on relationships, lesson two on factors affecting attraction, self-disclosure. In the video we're going to go over the points that you can see on the screen right now. So we're going to go through what self-disclosure actually is and how it is a factor that affects attraction in romantic relationships. We're going to have a look at some research into self-disclosure, so that's going to be uh, supporting research if possible. And then finally, we are going to evaluate self-disclosure as a factor affecting attraction in romantic relationships. Okay, so let's make a start. Um, partner choice in romantic relationships is influenced by loads and loads of different factors, a lot of which I will talk about in later videos. But it would seem that one of the most important factors that constantly crops up in surveys and research on this type of thing is feeling secure enough around a partner to gradually reveal more and more personal information about yourself and have that partner then in turn share intimate information about themselves as well, which then over time... Um, leads to this building of trust and this building of an intimate amount of knowledge about each other, which then increases the amount of attraction that you feel towards each other as well. And that is exactly what self-disclosure is. The idea that relationship formation is built on trust with another person. So that trust is demonstrated by gradually revealing more and more personal information such as thoughts, feelings, experiences, morals, values, that type of thing um, that you might not necessarily share with a lot of other people or even with anybody else. Disclosing thoughts and feelings and you know that type of stuff that I just mentioned um, and allowing a partner to reveal their true selves in turn leads to greater intimacy in romantic relationships and ultimately leads to more satisfaction in those relationships as well. Now, one particular theory that uses self-disclosure is called social penetration theory, which was proposed by Altman and Taylor in 1973. Social penetration theory claims that by gradually revealing emotions and experiences and listening to the emotions and experiences that your partner shares, people gain a greater understanding of each other and display trust in each other as well. So the more that they reveal, the more that um, reciprocal sharing occurs, the more trust is going to be experienced in that relationship. Now, according to social penetration theory, self-disclosure has got two dimensions to it. It's got breadth and it's got depth as well. Now, to explain that, I'm going to use the metaphor of an onion. Altman and Taylor first describe the process of self-disclosure like peeling back the layers of an onion, which possesses both breadth around the edges, but it also has depth as well. Now, at first, people share a little bit of choice information and they don't necessarily always share it in great amount of detail because you know detail is quite risky so they share a little bit like their tastes let's say or uh, you know biographical data that kind of stuff in just enough detail to keep people happy um so the breadth is fairly narrow and the depth is fairly narrow as well because some topics are just quite simply off limits at the beginning of a relationship. And then as you build trust in the relationship, um, build trust in your partner, breadth increases and then depth also increases as well. So in the beginning, people are only going to disclose very superficial details about themselves, such as their music tastes, their hobbies, their interests, where they're from, that kind of stuff. And then gradually, as more and more sharing occurs, as your partner shares more and more with you, um, people are, will start to reveal more and more intimate details, such as religious views, political beliefs, family values. Um, deeply held fears and fantasies, 
um, difficult experiences, concepts of self, goals, aspirations, that type of stuff. The stuff that you don't necessarily always talk to everybody about. So breadth refers to the various facets of a person's life, whereas depth refers to the details concerning each one of those areas. Both breadth and depth increase as trust is established, and the deeper you uh, go and the more breadth you achieve, the more intimate the relationship is going to be. So one of the more important aspects of self-disclosure is the idea of reciprocity. Now, Rice and Shaver in 1988 point out that in order for a relationship to develop, there needs to be a reciprocal element to disclosure, as well as an increase in breadth and depth. Because if you decide to reveal something that's quite intimate to you, you would hope that your partner or whoever you're revealing it to would respond in a manner that is quite rewarding. So what that means is hopefully they will respond with understanding, empathy, and hopefully they will respond by revealing something that's quite intimate to them as well. Because what we, what tends to happen is if people make a lot of disclosures that are quite personal and they don't get anything back, that actually has a negative effect on the relationship because that first partner is revealing a lot of personal information quite regularly and they're not receiving anything back. And so the trust actually starts to dissolve and starts to disappear. And so you start to reveal less and less information because you know you're not actually going to get anything back from your partner. So there needs to be a balance of self-disclosure between both partners in a successful romantic relationship. And that balance of self-disclosure increases feelings of intimacy and deepens the relationship going forward. Okay, so we're going to move on to the evaluation points now. As normal, I've got two or three evaluation points for you, and they're all in the peel structure, ready for you to see what they would look like. So we've got research support. I'm not going to read it to you because it's it's there and you can pause it if you... um if you need to see it. Um, But I'll give you the basics. So we have research support for the role of self-disclosure. Sprecher and Henrik in 2004, they studied heterosexual couples who were dating and found that as self-disclosure increased, so did relationship satisfaction. Then you've got more studies like that um, from 2005. Um, That was a a daily diary study about the progress in relationships. And again, self-disclosure and the perception of disclosure in a partner led to greater feelings of intimacy in a couple, which is great. Uh, The reverse happened as well. So a lack of intimacy um, was also correlated with a lack of self-disclosure. So such supporting research obviously increases the validity and our confidence in the validity of self-disclosure as a factor, um, which is great. This type of evaluation point is amazing because it is a study and it is research support as well. So it's always a very good one to have. You've also got a correlation versus causation evaluation point. Um, So a lot of support for self-disclosure comes from correlational research. So there's this idea of, I'm sure there is a link between self-disclosure and relationship satisfaction. Um, There is still this issue of cause and effect as well. Um, Despite the fact that there is this issue of cause and effect, you can't deny that self-disclosure is important. And actually, self-disclosure has got a lot of strong everyday life applications. So it can be used in relationship counseling, for example, as it can help partners to improve their communication skills and therefore increase the intimacy in their relationships. So even though there is an issue around causation, there is no doubt that social penetration theory and the the theory of self-disclosure can be used in the real world to enhance romantic relationship experiences, which is great. So it's like a a limitation followed on by a strength as well. So again, a quite a nice one to have there. Um, finally, I've given you an issues and debates one, just so I c- so you can see how the issues and debates topic ties in here. So there is a definite culture bias 
in self-disclosure research. Um, so social penetration theory was developed based on Western research, individualist cultures, so it may not apply. Um, in 2013, it was found that men and women in the USA tended to disclose more than people in China, for example. However, despite the fact that people disclosed more in the USA, levels of relationship satisfaction were still high. So it suggests that self-disclosure is not a requirement for successful relationships in all cultures, and that there may actually be other factors involved as well, such as physical attractiveness, which is a topic that we're going to look at in one of my other videos. So other factors could have an equal, if not a greater impact, making social penetration theory quite culturally biased. So again, you've got another limitation there. Okay, so you've had three evaluation points there. One strength, one limitation, and strength, and one limitation. And I hope they've all made sense. Okay, that is the end of the video. I hope it's been useful, and I hope that everything has made sense. Thanks for listening.